So a lot of you guys are probably familiar with what happened at Cedar Valley University. In short, there was a stabbing. The person who did the stabbing got arrested, charged, and the person who ended up getting stabbed, um, he is safe as far as I know. He has some Title IX complaints against him, um, and that has kind of caused some tension at Cedarville University because some people think that uh, you know the university hasn't handled his his cases correctly, and other people um, just think that we should just uh, let everything alone and just not even talk about the entire situation because if we do talk about it, it's gossip. And I know that probably sounds like a crazy thing. Like, you you might think that, you know, Christians hearing about sexual harassment or assault allegations might not think that, you know, we should just not talk about it because it's gossip. But, you know, that is what we see. And, you know, these comments were good enough that they already have uh, have made for my, my thumbnail of this video. Uh, so... I did this video that, you know, it got some pretty high views, but the retention was horrible just because I SEO'd the crap out of this thing. And it wasn't really about the revival. And I'm sure a lot of people clicked on it looking for the revival, which is why it's my biggest video right now, which is kind of unfortunate. Um, but, you know, I did talk about everything that was going on, which is why it was 40 minutes long, because after um, the student got stabbed and there were calls for protests um, re in regards to how Dr. Weiss were handling these situations, Dr. White decided to call for a revival, and then that sort of disrupted a lot of the protests. And in the backlash of that, People started bullying the Cedarville interpreter. Um, and also on top of that, they were saying that pretty much anyone who is, you know, saying that Cedarville University doesn't handle their Title IX cases correctly, uh, they're just, you know, spouting rumors, being divisive, uh, trying to spark the vision at Cedarville University. And, you know, this line of thinking was espoused in my comment section here. So uh, we have a couple things. Um, you know, one uh, person, Marta Marta, said, we don't care, get over it, boy. Which is, you know, an interesting way to react to uh, people being concerned about how sexual assault um, allegations are being handled at a university. We don't, saying we don't care to sexual assault allegations uh, doesn't really sound like the most like Christ-like response. It's very interesting. Uh, but there's one comment that I actually wanted to touch on a lot more because it's the one I've been hearing a lot and it's the one that I've heard and, and seen, you know, a lot of students on campus use to try to shut down these uh, conversations. Dr. White hinted at it, but he didn't really explicitly uh, use this talking point. But this one comes from Karen Ostendorf Ayika. And she said here, this sounds like gossip. And I've been seeing this a lot. A lot of people were saying, you're just gossiping if you're talking about Cedarville University scandals. And, you know, that logic, it doesn't really work. And um, I think it might be helpful specifically to kind of go over at first, um, you know, what gossip is. If you go to dictionary.com, you'll see the definition of gossip is idle talk or rumor, especially about the personal or private affairs of other. Now, that first definition is what I really want to focus on. Gossip, uh, you know, specifically is when you're talking about personal or private things, things that are like none of your business. If you can legitimately say that something is not your business, then it is 100% gossip. But if it is something that is your business, then it isn't gossip. Now, <clears throat> The, the label of gossip does not apply if a situation is public, which is why a lot of the people who are out here saying that talking about the suitable university scandals is uh, you're just gossiping. They were completely fine with talking about the Johnny Depp and Amber Heard case. It was fine because that is a public situation, um, you know, and it also doesn't apply to a legal proceeding, which is what the Cedarville stabbing is <clears throat> and it also doesn't apply to incidents that like aren't legal but they do put like safety and health of other people at risk so uh, another example of this would be the whole like trail derailment, derailment right in east palestine and this also applies to unresolved title nine cases um <clears throat> especially if you know they're you know even if they're not 100 percent confirmed they're definitely like corroborated so uh, there's like some like cause for concern because let's be honest right you know 
I'm sure, you know, the Cedarville Interpreter crowd might get mad at me for this, but not every Title IX um, accusation is going to be true, going to be correct. Hashtag believe all women. No, we're not, we're not on that nonsense. You know, we do have to trust due process. So I do understand where, like, some people are coming from when, we, when they say, like, oh, we need to kind of let the process, you know, run its course. I think the problem is, of course, if the... the process isn't you know being followed correctly then mm, that's where you have problems but still always innocent before proven guilty now i found this particularly interesting that a lot of people were taking what was going on uh at shooterville particularly with the title nine incidents um and saying that talking about you know the the uh, what had reportedly happened um and how shooterville university was handling these incidents People were saying that was gossip. It was really interesting because this is literally the types of conversations that Paul was having when he was speaking to the Corinthians. If you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 5, he kicks it off literally saying, it is actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you, and such sexual immorality is not even named among the Gentiles that a man has his father's wife. And then verse 2 says, And you are puffed up and have not rather mourned that he who has done this deed might be taken away uh, from among you. Now, he didn't say, we've got proof, like evidence that this has happened. He's actually saying, it's been reported that this has happened. So I'm pretty sure that this has occurred. You need to put this man kind of like out of your assembly. Interesting that if the same thing happens at Cedarville University and you're talking about what has actually been reported, then it turns into gossip and sinful, despite Paul having done the exact same thing. I find that rather interesting. Now, I do think that one question that is interesting to bring up is, does the Cedarville interpreter appropriately address the, the gossip debate? I think that when it comes to like gossip, one tough thing for me too is that, I, in my opinion, I get the impression that Cedarville interpreter is biased in the favor of anyone who comes out with an accusation. I've never heard the Cedarville interpreter, for example, say that an accusation, um, you know, was unreliable or um, unverified. I've never heard Cedarville interpreter say, you know, someone has said this, but I don't particularly like believe it. Um, I get the impression that Cedarville interpreter leans more into the, you know, believe all women if someone comes forward with the allegation, you instantly like kind of take them at their word, which I don't think is healthy and I don't think it's good and right. Um, <clears throat> especially when it comes to Christians, um, you know, accusing Christ other Christians of doing things. I think that we should be very, very careful about that. Um, but the Cedarville interpreter was right on one count where they kind of talked about how, uh, you know, this, this whole gossip situation was kind of brought on by us just like not having answers to questions that we we had uh burning questions about very pertinent situations in regards to like the the safety of the students but i do think that they misplaced the blame on following the rumors i remember them saying that they the rumors occurred because we rarely have scandals um it's not the, this is the case because at least from what i understand the university has scandals like every like two years or so um the problem is that details tend to be scant regarding these sorts of incidents. And then, of course, I think, you know, Dr. White did say some good things when he was, even as he was sort of like distracting folks away from the uh, the, the, the protests. But still, there, there were some details that like that would have been helpful to, to, to share with the student body. And there are just unfortunately too many unknowns of the whole situation and i think we have to be at peace with not knowing everything but there is certainly some unease when students very much get the feeling that the university knows a lot more about what's going on in these events that directly affect their safety on campus and several sort of universities like withholding that information so that sort of puts people on edge understandably so I will say that it is uh, inappropriate to throw Proverbs 17, 28 at, pe at people's faces, which is what uh, the Cedarville Encourager uh, did. Because they kind of, you know, said, you know, because it, it, it's a verse that says, right, that if you're, you know, even even a, a dumb dude, uh, you know, is viewed as, as smart when he keeps his mouth shut. It's kind of what he's saying, right? Um, and that verse has kind of been used a lot just to tell people, hey, shut up. But if you if you if you quote the verse, you know, it sounds nicer and it sounds more Christian. But 
The problem with that is we have multiple verses that say that Christians should like speak out for those who are being unjustly treated. Um, and, you know, of course, we also have, you know, Paul in the earlier passage, um, you know, directly speaking to people saying, hey, I've heard you've done these things. Get that person out of your sight. Yeah, we have Proverbs, Proverbs 31, um, 8 through 9, which essentially states that we are called to speak out uh, for those who are being unjustly treated. And Ephesians 4.15 also calls Christians to speak the truth in love, which means we can do the same when it comes to Cedarville University incidents. Now, the in love thing is like very, very important, right? I don't think that we should try to impute um motives onto Dr. White, because let's be honest, we don't know what's going on in his heart. So for example, I don't 100% know, you know, whether or not, you know, he was intending to just like, you know, sweep the whole situations uh, under the rug. I, I completely understand why it would look that way. But we also don't 100% know, uh, you know, what was in his mind, because I also know, you know, as you know, being a student there for like four years uh, on campus, that he's he has legitimately been wanting revival on campus every single year i think every, even every single semester he said that you know from chapel like i don't know if y'all just forgot <laughs> but but he he's, he's legitimately like said this so him wanting revival on campus is not something new so it is possible that it is this is coming from a very genuine you know place of just wanting revival on campus and it, that is a possibility and i think even, and I can see why it wouldn't look like it's a genuine, it was a genuine call for revival. Even if that's not the case, I think, you know, we still have to have some grace there and just not rush to judgment. That, that, that's what I would say. Um, and I think, you know, when it comes to speaking the truth in love, I think a lot of the folks who are kind of like the, like the anti, um, anti-protests, anti-Cedarville interpreter folks um, could probably take a note you know, out of out of that that commandment, uh, that exhortation, especially when you know we've got we had Doctor White call for a revival, uh, a, a spiritual revival, and then on the heels of that we had people bullying an independent publication of which uh, at least one member is a current student, um, calling them all sorts of names, saying that they're you know just trying to spark division, enemies of God, like what. I mean, people are, are le we're legitimately saying, yeah, spiritual revival. We hate you. You're a terrible person. You are an enemy of God. Based on, you know, based on, in, in large part, a, a lot of them are actually based on rumors. But I figured I would just address this because the whole, like, this is gossip. You can't talk about this. Um, rhetoric is just getting kind of out of hand. And actually, is sort of like opposed to what we see, uh, you know, a lot of other godly saints doing in scripture anyways. So I just thought it would be good to like put that out there because it's just it's just not the case. Uh, I understand, you know, not wanting your heroes to fall. You know, I feel like there are like three types of Cedarville University students, right? The Cedar stand, right? which is like Cedarville University can do no wrong. Dr. White is Daddy White. We've got number two, the the Yellow Jackets, who are just like, hmm, university's not perfect, but it's good. I like it here. You know, some things they could work on, but I, I enjoy the place, um, which is where I personally find myself. And then you have number three, which is like the Cedar Villains, which like university's like terrible, awful. They need to change almost everything about the university. The covenant is dumb and stupid. Uh, we should be able to drink as much as we want to. Let's break all the rules because all the rules are dumb. You know, we hate the dress code policy, all, all of that, that, that sort of thing. There's a wide range of opinions among the students actually it may not sound like seem like that from the outside in but having been there you know there are all sorts of opinions about the university about the rules uh and i think you know with all of those things going on we just need to like make sure that we're treating each other properly uh not slandering each other right either side of the debate um and you know trusting god in the, these whole situations i know a lot of people are fearful right now with how cedarville university has handled these title nine incidents and again i don't think we 100 percent even know that they've mishandled these 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 cases necessarily uh i could be wrong but i have not seen sufficient evidence to say that just just reports um i think with everything like we just need to focus on on trusting god and everything i definitely speak out i think that that's, that's definitely a good thing to do but i think that prayer is more powerful than pretty much anything else you can do so that would probably be a more appropriate route to take things but i just wanted to, to say that 
talk about the whole situation, clear things up, and address some pretty bad takes in the comment section. Oh my goodness, I'm looking forward to seeing the comments on that one.